The birds are flying high. The sun is in the sky. Breeze drifting on by here in Vancouver. And you know what, man? I'm feeling really good about this team. Hey, don't look now. But the Vancouver Canucks are four points out of a playoff spot. Sure, the Oilers have three games in hand, which is pretty significant, but still... Seeing where everything is for the Vancouver Canucks right now, seeing Bruce Boudreaux, seeing five straight wins, seeing last night's game of the year, man, it's got me super excited. And we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of that and more in today's video. However, before we get underway with that, a big shout out to today's sponsor of the video. Ever want to step into the hockey collecting game but just don't have the time or space? Big fan of hockey cards or hockey ultimate team and want more content? Well, you're in luck. Because with the Top Skate app, you can satisfy that craving. Skate is a place where hockey fans all over the world can collect their favorite players and connect with other fans. You're likely already familiar with Topps trading cards, but Skate brings you all the same joys of collecting from the comfort of your smartphone. Just download the app for free, create an account, and get started on your collection. Daily missions, the mystery box, and spinning the wheel will help you get free cards and coins for your collection. Best of all, you can meet and trade cards with other members of the community as well to help complete your sets. You can also trade in cards to receive limited special ones too. Signature series, commander series, relic series, and current events moments with hundreds of different cards with insanely beautiful artwork. Top Skate is your new home for hockey memorabilia collecting. Download the app today for free and start building your ultimate collection. I'm on the app myself with the username LegoRox99. Now, just like the Michael Bublé song suggests, I am feeling good. And you're probably feeling really good right now too. Unless you're a Blue Jackets fan, that in which you're kind of upset that against Arizona, against Seattle, against Vancouver, you guys all stopped playing after the first period. It was pretty bad. But still, this Vancouver Canucks team right here is four points out of a playoff spot. And if you go over to the actual adjusted rankings, or however you want to call it, this is the post on Reddit that I wanted to highlight here. Posted by user Slippery Soup. this is how the points race actually goes down, using team point percentage, multiplying it by the highest games played amongst the teams that you're actually looking at. And the reason you would do it like that is because games played is uneven, so this just kind of allows every team to have an equal playing field. The Edmonton Oilers had an 18-point lead on the Canucks before, now that lead is 7.5 points. So the Canucks have gained 10.5 points in that race against Edmonton, 8 points against the Calgary Flames, 3 on the Ducks, 6 on the Sharks, 2 against the Kings, and 6 against the Seattle Kraken. This team is actually going out there and overtaking guys, and I get it, that's what 10 straight points is going to do for you. 5-0-0 is certainly good enough to make things a lot more interesting in this market, but you still have to remember that the Vancouver Canucks have won seven of their last eight. They won two games before the Pittsburgh game, which ultimately got Green and Benning fired. Yesterday's game was just kind of the icing on the cake, though, wasn't it? Like, every game is a new experience. Against LA, it was the absolute showcase of dominance under the new Boudreaux system. Bruce, there it is, comes out here and everybody starts chanting along. Against the Bruins and against the Winnipeg Jets, they were tight games, they were shootout games. The Canucks were able to get onto leads in these ones, and they held on. Sure, they kind of cracked at the end, but they pulled it together for the shootout. The Carolina game was something we hadn't really seen all too much out of the past little bit here for the Canucks, where it's a regulation win, but it's absolutely down to the wire. Last seconds of play, the Hurricanes are getting shots, they're getting chances, and they're trying their best to force things up in a tie, but... The Vancouver Canucks, man. Composure. They keep it together. Thatcher Demko stands tall, and the team eventually takes a very, very tight win. And then, of course, yesterday's game against the Blue Jackets had the same kind of flavor towards the end, but that's not what we care about. We don't care about the end, where the Blue Jackets had chances and Halak made saves. Nah, we care about the comeback here, man. The first three goal deficit the Vancouver Canucks have come back from and actually won since 2016. This is also, if we go over to all the stats, because everybody was posting about it like crazy, this is the first Vancouver Canucks three-goal deficit win in regulation for the first time since March 9th, 2010. So, yeah, um, not even during the entire Benning tenure did the team have a regulation win after being down by three goals. They had an overtime win against Carolina. That was the last three-goal deficit the team actually had where they came back and won. 
But you want to talk about even crazier stats, this is the first Canucks regulation home win from a three-goal deficit since February 13th, 1996 against the Jets. They rallied down back from 4-1, and they eventually won 5-4 with Russ Cortnall scoring the game winner. Yesterday's game was nothing short of legendary, and it's not even just the actual results of the team, but hey, let's take a look at Quinn Hughes. Let's see this. He, factoring on three of the four Canucks goals, getting three assists in the process, got himself his 10th career three-point game. Since Hughes entered the NHL in 2018-19, only one defenseman has registered more three-point games. John Carlson of the Caps, eh? Dude! That's absolutely nuts. In the past three years, only John Carlson has had more three-point games than Quinn Hughes has. If you go over to the NHL point leaders and you see where Hughes is amongst NHL defenders, he is right there. Sixth in the league in points, just behind Morgan Riley, Kale McCarr, Roman Yossi, Victor Hedman, and Adam Fox. There's only five points that separates all these guys, so it's a pretty tight defenseman scoring race over here. And considering the fact that Quinn Hughes in his own zone has really improved, like, I cannot stress how good Quinn Hughes has been this season compared to last, where last year, yes, he was scoring points, but the turnovers, you know, the giveaways in his own zone, it wasn't great this year. It's all gone. Like, even though the Canucks sucked for such an extended amount of time before Bruce Boudreaux came in here, I think it was like Quinn Hughes and Thatcher Demko, they were the only exception. Like, I get it. The team was bad. I've got a tight grip on reality, too. But I can't let go of what's in front of me here. Demko and Hughes, these guys stood up to play and... Ever since Boudreaux has been here, I mean, it's not even just Hughes going out there doing the thing. It's Tyler Myers. He's in a position where he actually has been playing some of the best hockey he has had in a Canucks sweater. No longer is he forced to being a shutdown guy, you know? They're just giving him big minutes. They're giving him the reins to go out there and do what he wants in the offensive zone. And a two-assist night yesterday goes out there and caps off that performance in a very positive way. And the team ended up losing out on Tucker Pullman. They had Burroughs and Juleson as top guys in their lineup because they only had 5D. They went out there and won. That's just absolutely incredible. It blows my mind every time I think about it. But either way, I have some other thoughts that I wanted to talk about here from Elliot Friedman's 32 Thoughts article. There are five straight thoughts talking about the Vancouver Canucks. So we're going to go over and read some of these over here. Jim Rutherford's introduction to Vancouver clarified the timeline of Francesco Aquilini's recent resume call. Aquilini reached out to Rutherford on the weekend of American Thanksgiving and visited him right after in Carolina and wished to finalize things the weekend of December 3rd, only for for it to be delayed by Rutherford actually getting sick with something that wasn't the virus. On December 4th, the night of the ugly home ice defeat to the Pittsburgh Penguins, Aquilini phoned Bruce Boudreaux while the latter was attending a Christmas party in Hershey. He asked me if I was interested in the opportunity to coach the Canucks, and I said, absolutely. And the next day, my agent phoned me, get your bags packed. I said, what are you talking about? And he goes, you're going to Vancouver if you want this. He read me the deal. Yeah, I'll go right away. The next thought talks about how Rutherford and Boudreaux also wanted to go back into the hockey world and actually have themselves another opportunity, saying that it was an added bonus for both of these guys, that that opportunity has now come in Canada. Coaching and managing in Canada has high risks and high rewards. Those two see the rewards. Two Leaf fans saving Vancouver. What a story. Another great line from Bruce Boudreaux, he told Carolyn Cameron, I'm making so many spelling mistakes, the players must think I've got my grade three, and that's it. I really like the next thought over here, too. A few of his contemporaries smiled at Rutherford, saying that he will observe for a month before assessing what he needs to do in Vancouver. He's been out a year. He can't wait to get in on the action, one executive said. He is working for permission on one assistant GM possibility, and there are plenty of possibilities for the assistant GM and regular GM. We mentioned Patrick Alvin last weekend. One source mentioned Mark Hunter. I turned all CHL questions to Jeff Merrick, whose intel said no, but another source mentioned that he had heard Hunter too, so we will see. I like how Rutherford is not going to go out there and immediately do things. We said this in the video yesterday, too. He doesn't want to turn things around in a hurry. He wants to go out there and do his job properly. Actually say, okay, we're going to go out there and we're going to take our time because this process of building a team that competes for Stanley Cups year in and year out, it's going to take some time. 
Jim Benning left us with Travis Hamanick, whom we have to throw onto the LTIR just so we can call up a guy properly. This team is already in shambles from a cap management and roster management perspective that it's not going to come easy going out there and changing this team for the better. Play along on this one and assume NHLers are going to the Olympics. There is a big stretch for Bo Horvat, as Elliot Friedman believes that he is on the bubble for the Olympic squad. I honestly don't know if the NHL is even going to go to the Olympics. I'm starting to get that seed of doubt planted into my head, you know? I think everybody kind of has that same unease, but either way... Bo Horvat, Olympic squad? Let me know in the comments what do you think about that. Also talk to me in the comments what do you think about, I guess, the other Olympic teams. We know Hughes and Miller and Besser are probably going to go over for Team USA. Maybe Garland, maybe Demko, who really knows? But just in general, talk to me in the comments what do you think about the Vancouver Canucks. Everything that we have discussed in this video over here, this team is fantastic to watch. I'm just honestly kind of interested in seeing how do the media and how do... The personnel and everybody involved, how do they react once the team goes on a losing streak? Because we know it's inevitable, right? It's Thanos. It's going to happen. It's just, how exactly is everybody going to respond to that? It's been all sunshine and rainbows the past week, so once things get all doom and gloom, I really want to see how this team responds to that kind of controversy once again. But we'll deal with that when we get there. I really like where the team is right now. Talk to me in the comments. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this. And I and I. And... Bye.